This is Alex Holcomb with Applied Information Sciences, and what I'm going to show is how you can override the existing upload page inside of Windows SharePoint Services 3.0. Now the same concept can be applied to the Record Center provided by Microsoft Office SharePoint Server 2007 as an effort to prevent modification of the record, but to allow modification of the record metadata. First, let's look at the out-of-the-box upload page. So I've got a team site here, and if we go into the Shared Documents library and click on Upload, you'll see that this takes us to the upload.aspx page contained within the underscore layouts directory. Uh, and this is the functionality that I would like to reuse. Uh, there's a couple things I want to tweak about it, though. Uh, the first is I'd like to get rid of this Upload Multiple Files link, and the second is this Override Existing Files. Now, what I want is my page to not override existing files. So ideally, this is not checked. And if I can get rid of this checkbox altogether so the user doesn't have a choice, then all the better. So what I'm going to do is create a class that derives from this upload page and tweak, make the tweaks and modifications that I need to. So I've got a class here that I've created called uh, my upload. Uh, now, this project is referencing the Microsoft.SharePoint and Microsoft.SharePoint.Application pages assemblies. Uh, we're also using the namespaces here. Uh, so you see that my class, called my upload, uh, is going to derive from the Microsoft.SharePoint.Application pages.upload page. Uh, and I've got a, I'm overriding the onload method, uh, and we'll get to that in a second. Now, first what I need to do is build this with a strong name. So I'm going to build that. Uh, the next thing I need is my ASPX page. So I'm going to reuse the upload.ASPX page, uh, naming it something different. So if I go to the 12 directory and template and layouts, uh, inside here, there's this upload.ASPX page. And that's the page that we were looking at a second ago. So what I want to do is copy all of the contents from this page, and we're going to create a new page uh, based on that. So inside of my project, I'm going to add a new document, and we're going to call this my upload, and we'll paste in the contents from the upload.aspx page. Now I'm giving this a new name because I don't want to overwrite the existing out-of-the-box upload.aspx page. So first, let me format this so you can see it. There's a couple things that I want to change to make this ASPX page use my class instead of the default class. The first is the assembly information. So instead of using the Microsoft.SharePoint.Application pages assembly, we're going to use mine. And this is called custom upload. Now the version for mine is version 1, and I need to get the public key token. So the way I'm going to do that is with the Visual Studio command prompt. We'll do the SN minus capital T, bin debug, and then the name of our assembly. Uh, and that returns us the public key token. So we'll take that value and we'll paste it here. Uh, the next is the page information. So the original one was set to inherit from Microsoft.SharePoint.Application pages.upload page. Uh, and instead, we're going to use my class. So it's called custom upload dot my upload. So this ASPX page will now use our class. Now if I go through this ASPX page and look at it, I'm, I'll find what I'm looking for. Uh, and that is the link for multiple documents and the checkbox uh, to override an existing document. Uh, so I put the functionality in the on upload method uh, to do, make the tweaks that I would like. Uh, the first is to hide that multiple upload link. Uh, and again, when I look through it, I find that there's this hyperlink control called upload multiple link. Um, and that is controlling this right here. So at first, I set its visibility to false, so it won't display. Uh, the second is unchecking the override existing files and hiding that. So again, when I look through the ASPX page, I find the control called overwrite single, uh, which is that checkbox. I set its checked property to false, and I set its visibility to false also. So the last step is to deploy these things. 
Uh, and the way I'm going to do this is through a batch script. And what that script is going to do is copy my upload.aspx page into that layouts directory under the 12 template folder. Uh, the next thing it's going to do is register my assembly into the GAC. And I'm going to use GAC util to uninstall the assembly if it exists already, and then install my freshly compiled assembly. Uh, and then finally, we're going to reset the application pool so our assembly gets picked up. So let's go ahead and run this. So let's come back and let's load our custom page. And we'll type in my upload.aspx. So we see when our custom ASPX page loads, uh, those two uh, controls are hidden. Right? The, uh, the upload multiple files link is hidden, and the overall existing files checkbox is also hidden. Now let's go ahead and test out that functionality. So we're going to upload a document called doc1, and this will upload into our library. And let's go ahead and try to upload our document again. So I'm going to go back on the upload. We're going to go back to the my upload.aspx page, and let's try it one more time. So we're going to upload doc1.doc. .doc. You'll notice uh, the controls are hidden again. When we try to do this, now it tells us that the document already exists. So this provides the functionality that we're looking for. Uh, but if you'll notice, I had to go back and retype in the my upload.aspx page to get to it. Now, ideally, I could just overwrite what this upload link is going to take us to. Right? So instead of taking us to the upload.aspx, it takes us to the my upload.aspx page. Uh, that is set in several places, and that's deep inside of SharePoint. Uh, to kind of get around this, right, rather than making a bunch of modifications everywhere, I'm going to modify the content type so it uses my upload page. So the idea is when a user comes to new and selects document, uh, they'll be taken to my upload page and not the out-of-the-box upload page. Now in order to do that, there's a couple settings I need to change on this library. Uh, so if we go into the document library settings, the first is to allow content types to be enabled and used on the library. So if we go to advanced settings, we say allow management of content types. Now what that is going to allow us to do is modify the properties of this content type. So if I click on the document content type, what I want to change is the document template that this content type is going to use. So you'll see here there's a box here for enter the URL for an existing document template. Now normally you could set this to a specific document template, but in this case I'm going to point this to my custom ASPX page. And I go ahead and click OK. Now this is only going to impact this document on this library. Uh, but the result is when I go back to the shared documents and I click on new document, re redirect it to my custom upload page. Uh, and this would allow the user to go ahead and select that document. And it would prevent them from, from actually overriding the document if it exists. Now I could also create my own content types that do this for me automatically. And the way I would do that is, is in the schema for the content type, uh, I would add a document template element and set the target to my custom ASPX page. So that target would be uh, slash underscore layouts slash uh, my upload.aspx in this case. And that would take care of that functionality for me. So if nothing else, I hope that you've seen that you can take some of the ASPX pages that exist and reuse their functionality, uh, in particular the upload page.